Breaking tonight, continuing coverage across the country. You're looking live there in Atlanta uh, as police are out in force. There are also National Guard troops in a number of cities across the country, including uh, in the nation's capital. Let's get reaction to all of this, the events of the past few days. John James is a Republican candidate for Senate from Michigan. Mr. James, thanks for the time. First, uh, your thoughts overall about where we stand tonight as a nation. Thoughts overall, uh, we've had a number of times in our nation's history when what we've seen on camera or what we've heard in a book or what we've seen on television has shocked us. Um, but what's been going on with, with uh, racism in this country uh, is, is not necessarily getting worse. Uh, it's just getting caught on film. Um, the plight of what's been going on, yes, there's racism. Yes, there's social economic disadvantage, regardless what your race is. But right now, we have a nation's attention that's been captured. Right now, we have people who are focused on George Floyd and his killing, and it's being squandered by, uh, by looters, by rioters, uh, by people who are taking this conversation and taking it away from the change that we need to have in this country. I'm looking forward to uh, using the blessings that I have to be a blessing to others and using my experience both as a black man in this country and as an officer to bring folks together and to get the leadership that we so desperately and badly need to move our entire nation forward regardless of race, color or creed. You know, there are a lot of Democrats who have spoken up about the president's uh, tweets and, and what he said. Um, Speaker Pelosi was out saying that he should be a unifying force at this time. He's not. Uh, what's your message for the president? Uh, my message for the president is, uh, Mr. President, thank you for coming to Detroit to listen to communities that were disproportionately negatively affected by the COVID crisis. The president was here last week speaking to African-American leaders as well as myself to address issues of, of disinvestment uh, that have been happening in our communities for, for generations. Um, Detroit is 84 percent African-American, and there are people right now marching here today so that we have our voices heard and to fix these, these, uh, these situations where both parties have failed. I'm in the position that I am in because somebody marched for me, and I'm looking forward to using the platform that I have and the opportunity to go to the United States Senate to make sure that no matter who's in the majority or who's in the White House, we have a voice and we have a say to permanently fix these killings all over the country of African American men. You know, I've mentioned this a couple of times tonight, 1968, uh, there was an election that year. The candidate then, uh, Vice President Richard Nixon, he ran an ad. I want you to take a listen to this. This is about law and order back then. It is time for an honest look at the problem of order in the United States. Dissent is a necessary ingredient of change. But in a system of government that provides for peaceful change, there is no cause that justifies resort to violence. Let us recognize that the first civil right of every American is to be free from domestic violence. So I pledge to you, we shall have order in the United States. Is law and order going to be this president's pitch? Is it going to be a political winner this time, considering where we are tonight? Uh, I'll have two answers to that. One, you'll have to ask him, and two, time will tell. But right now, my focus is on making sure that we get uh, socioeconomic mobility up. Um, right now, in the city of Detroit, for example, 33% of the city, 84% African Americans in poverty, not scraping by, not making ends meet, but in poverty. We need to make sure that we remove the barriers and increase access to the American dream. And I'm looking forward to working with the president and anybody else who can help improve the situation so we have no more George Floyds in the future. Yeah. Well, Mr. James, we appreciate your time tonight, and hopefully we won't be doing this for many more nights in a row. We'll be following your race. Thank you. Thank We're you. We're going to take a short break right now. When we come back, we'll get another live report from Minneapolis, and we'll take you all around the country. This live coverage on Fox News Channel continues.